Hello and welcome. My name is Andrew Brooks and we're going to have a look through my Beatles collection and this time in this video we're going to be looking at the box sets that were issued by HMV Records for the Beatles CDs when they were issued on CD for the very first time. They were only available in HMV Records and I've got the whole stack of them here for you to look at. So sit down, grab a drink and enjoy the video. My name's Andrew Brooks and as I said we are going to be looking at the HMV box sets that came out for the very first time the Beatles were issued on CD way back in 1987. Now they weren't very quick in coming out on CD. I can remember CDs what coming out in like the early 80s, 83 maybe, I think Dire Straits probably was the first one. But the Beatles never came out on CD until much later on. And as a result of that, there was a big ho hoopla when they were finally released, and I do believe there were a few pirates floating around before the official releases. So anyway, HMV stores in the UK decided for every release of a Beatles CD, because they didn't all come out in one go, they were slowly issued, and um, the first four came out in 1987, and what HMV decided to do was package them up in a very nice box set. Um, obviously they're not official uh, EMI, but I should imagine HMV got um, sanctioned from EMI and the Beatles to do it. So here we go, 1987, and this is the very first one. It's the Beatles on compact disc. As you can see, it's got Please Please Me with the Beatles, A Hard Day's Night, and Beatles for Sale. Um, unfortunately, it did come in a very shiny black box, as you can see. I'll move it around in case the glare's um, on it. And this as a result over the years does show lots of wear being on black so if you can find one that hasn't got that grab it because they're, they're quite quite rare um, so as I say um, quite quite boring um, the actual box it's I think it probably mirrors the um, the later uh, bread bin style box set of all the um, CDs when it came out but uh, this was the first one and uh, we'll open it up now uh, take the lid off so that's the lid um, they were all individually numbered as well so that's the inside nice picture track listings and as you can see I've got no idea what they were numbered to how limited they were but as you can see this is number 382 uh, quite a low number very pleased with that now um, they did came they did come with a um, an information sheet written by Johnny Black who I from memory used to work at Beatles Monthly I think Beatles Monthly magazine um, so it's a bit of blurb about all the uh, all the CDs and it's yeah, interesting reading if you've got time to read it I'm not going to read it all out to you because I'm sure many of you will have uh, seen it before so inside inside the uh, set this is how it was laid out got a nice inlay tray plastic unlike the uh, cardboard let it be one from 1970 this is plastic and the CDs lift off and then underneath as you can see there is a book and it's the, the book of Beatles lists I've never opened it it's never come out of its um, its place so it's something I probably would never never take out anyway interesting note though on the very first issues of the Beatles CDs they made a mistake and on the back it was printed ADD, which was, if I remember correctly, was um, analog recording, digital mixing, and then digital issue on a CD. Um, it should have read AAD, analog recording, analog mixing, and then a digital issue on a CD. So you'll find a lot of these early ones, if I hold it up, hopefully the camera's focusing on it, you'll see they've put a little sticker. And as I say, that's on all of these early issue CDs. That's how you can tell if you've got an early issue one, as you can see, Hard Day's Night, and that's got the back. So that's the first one, the first four. I'll put the lid back on. Now the next one only had three in it, and it came in a lovely red. As you can see, still see signs of wear, but not as obvious on a red box. And this just had Help, Rubber Salt and Revolver on it. 
false red, take the lid off and as per the other one, um, nice picture, track listings and as you can see on this one I've got number 3120. Um, so obviously there was more than 3000 issued, um, it's quite nice. Once again we have um, an information sheet to accompany the release to give you all the information you need to know about the three CDs. That one there. And inside there's the three CDs. Now if we take a hard day's night out you will see that this says ADD even though it was obviously analogue um, mix and they haven't put a sticker on this one and they haven't corrected the mistake. Um, taking these out they gave you a reproduction of Beatles book number 12. No idea why they chose 12. Why didn't they re repro the um, uh, first one? Maybe it's to do with the time period, although that's a, a hard day's night photo, so that's not included in the uh, in the box set. But again, nice plastic container for carrying the CDs. There we go. So that's the second one. Issued. Now, after this, HMV decided that they would do individual releases. Um, I think probably what happened was EMI, instead of releasing four or three at a time, they, they came out individually to mark the uh, anniversary of the release, possibly. So, um, the next one is Sergeant Pepper, as you can see there. That's a nice blue colour. And uh, nice photos on the front. Uh, I think that's an alternate shot, if I'm correct. But uh, again, we lift it up. Nothing on the inside other than the number 3493. Um, so, however, they did give you this very, very nice, very, very nice big glossy book. Again, another alternate photo. And I think this is probably about the first time we became aware of, of the alternate photos. Um, from memory anyway, I, I don't recall seeing them before and the setting up of the session a little bit story about it see there all black and white photos but, um, there we are, 20 years on it says at the bottom there hence uh, that must have been the 20th anniversary release and inside they've now reverted away from the um, uh, plastic they've gone to cardboard again and the CD, if I can get it out ok, there's the CD, it comes in a cardboard slip case um, with a booklet and uh, the CD, and now the booklet is um, the same as a regular release CD. Um, gives you all the all the info inside and photos as well. Um, so that's that's the CD that came with it. I'm not sure if they now issue them not in a cardboard slipcase and with the booklet included inside. It could well be. Um, also included inside was. It's very nice. It was 20 years ago. HMV Sergeant Pepper um, badge, or for our American friend, um, button. It's a pin badge on the back. So if ever you see any of these floating around, they came out of this box set. And also, finally, they gave you the replica couple cutout that came with the album. So it's it's they've upped the package. It's very nice. Um, but you only do get the one disc in it, and I'm just reconstructing the packaging as we speak. There we go. So that was um, oops. That's the HMV box set for Sergeant Pepper. Okay, next up we have um, Magical Mystery Tour again, limited edition box set. Um, interesting because um, obviously we never got the album in the UK uh, until um, the 70s, 76 I believe, 
uh, whereas our American friends had um, had the American Issue album, which had the EPs that we had plus bonus tracks. So there we are. That's the cover, and on the inside, uh, mine's numbered at 4,846. Again, just a, a plain white inner. However, um, we have cardboard packaging again and the CD just slips out fairly easy to reveal that underneath and lift out the inlay and they've certainly gone above and beyond this time because not only do we get the badge the button magical mystery tool we get a fabulous poster there we go I'll break that And it starts off with a little bit of the um, the intro to Magical Mystery Tour, the, the, the film itself. So uh, let me just put this back the correct way so I don't ruin it. So we get the badge, the poster. And now we also get a booklet as well. So, there we go. Nice photos from the time, a bit of blurb about each track, Mom Rishi times, and coming into, as you can see there, the launch of Apple at the end. So that is the Magical Mystery Tour box set. Yeah, let's just construct that back together again. Right, next up is a big one. It's a white album. Um, I, I'm, from memory, these were being released on the 20th anniversary of each uh, each release. So, it was on compact disc, again H HMV, and once again, um, blank inner, apart from number 5330. The CD itself was. Uh, came in the double um, plastic case and the CDs were individually numbered as well um, oops. and then they just look like that there's no uh, Apple mentioned on it um, it's just EMI obviously though it was an Apple release so you would like to think that uh, HMV slash EMI if they were involved would have um, also repackaged the stuff and I'm sure that the original poster and the pictures are inside the CD so we've got a bit of a boring badge really but I suppose what else could they do for the white album and um, and then there's the book and that's all you get that's all you get pictures of them and they haven't reproduced the... Uh, oh, there we are. Yes, they have. I was just about to say they haven't reproduced the pictures, but they have. So I'm guessing they must have uh, got the license from uh, EMI. And back in the day, HMV and EMI were all part of the same company, but I believe the record shops were sold off later on. Yeah. And that is the White Album. Put the badge back in. CD back in, just out of interest. Um, I'm going to have a quick look in the booklet, and, uh, and it does actually recreate the poster and the pictures inside the booklet. It goes back on. Now the next one, uh, Yellow Submarine. This apparently is. The hardest one out of all of the sets I find. Um, I, I believe when they say limited edition, it really was a limited edition. And I can remember people buying all the rest of them, thinking, "Oh well, I'll, I'll get, I'll pick this one up," and it just disappeared out of the shops. So this really was a limited edition, and um, they, 
it caught everyone. It caught a lot of collectors out. So there we are with the the lid. Um, this is number 739. So I've got no idea how many it was limited to. All I know is it really was. Um, and we have the regular CD that came out. Cardboard inlay. Put it in there like that, so you can see. Cardboard inlay again. And they did give you a few little extras in here. So, of course, you've got another badge button. Be nice, probably be nice to have all these in uh, all the way down because then it lifts all the albums. Um, printed on yellow card. You've got a little bit of blurb about it all. And then, interestingly, you got this. And it's a construct your own. You have to cut it out. Cardboard yellow submarine. Now, um, obviously, I haven't cut it out. Um, I don't intend to. I'm going to keep it intact as it is. There we are. And that was it for the yellow submarine um, box. And uh, as I say, that one's pretty tough to to find. If you can get hold of one these days, I'd recommend um, picking it up fairly quickly. Because uh, they don't they didn't hang around at the time, and uh, I should imagine they're they're quite scarce these days. Okay, moving on up. Now it's Abbey Road, alternate shot. Um, probably the first time I believe these photos were actually issued properly on a on a, an official release. Um, I think everyone had seen the six photos before, uh, and of course now, 50 years later, there are even more photos. Um, Coming to light from this se from this session, obviously Linda was there, and she's she's took taken quite a few unseen ones, and there was a new new one came out a few weeks ago that I'd never seen before of them just as they got to the end of the crossing and they were just stepping off, and the bus that's in the background it was was almost upon them. So again, this is a HMV limited edition um, number on this one one thousand one hundred and sixty six. Quite a low number, if numbers mean anything to people. Um, now, this is the packaging, as you can see, the CD there. And it just lifts off as normal. Now, they did go a little bit um, over the, not over the top, but they did go out of their way to make this one a little bit more nicer. Because, uh, uh, again, um, alternate shot of, of the Abbey Road photo session. First time of us seeing the sketch from the uh, how, how Paul envisaged it. Um, a photo from the sessions. Another one there. But only one of the alternate photos. We did get a nice badge, as you would expect if you've been collecting the whole series. And they actually made the alternate photo into a nice square poster and if you had a nice square frame that would, that would go in there quite handsomely not one poster not one but two I gave you that as well again if you've got a nice rectangular frame probably fit in there quite nice there we are um, I believe you, these are quite common if you see them at record fairs and things, so uh, if you're after the posters, make sure there's two in there. There has to be two for it to be complete. Put the lid back on. And then we come to the last one of the group's issues uh, at the time. I believe the others we had to wait a little bit of time for. Obviously, let it be. Another the black sleeve, and uh, lifting the lid, we find this is number 511. And I'm guessing um, people had stopped collecting them. Maybe they weren't selling as well as they used to. Um, and I, I seem to remember that, num that the pr production numbers were, were um, uh, getting less and less. So uh, anyway, there it is in a cardboard um, case, and again on the back it's Parlophone EMI um, with no hackle mentioned on there. 
Um, it has been digitally remastered, however, I think there's probably a superior mix from a few years back now. Um, take that out, and then inside, as you would hope, nice Let It Be badge, mm. not too inspired. And unfortunately, no replica of the Get Back book from the original Let It Be box set. However, do get a nice booklet. A picture of John and George there, um, John and Yoko, and Paul and Heather. The, um, these look like stills from the uh, from the movie itself. Bingo. And a few photos from the rooftop, which I'm sure we've seen, and obviously were used in the original Get Back book that came with the album, um, which I'll show you on another date. It's uh, there on the shelf. So, uh, maybe a little bit disappointing. Maybe we were thinking we'd get the uh, repress of the book and, and then it wouldn't fall to pieces when we opened it and stuff like that. But, uh, anyway, so that was obviously the. Uh, the albums that were issued at the time um, when the band were together um, then EMI and Apple decided that they would then issue some of the um, the later uh, albums on CD so we now have the Red Album 62, 66 let's take the lid off again numbered, slightly different, 1, 4 802, this one, and the um, standard black cardboard, and uh, a sealed red album CD, and for the first time, Apple in the back. So let's uh, deconstruct this and see what we have in here. Well, firstly, we have an advert for. Um, the album. There we are. Released on September the 20th, 1993. There we go. I thought that was in there actually. I'm not sure if that came with it or I added it in after picking it up. And <laughs> I even kept the price. So for 26.99, that's how much this box set cost. I'm sad like that. Um, there's your badge, your button for 62.66 and once again we get a, a poster and it's quite an unusual one I um, don't ever recall seeing this issued as a poster anywhere else but probably uh, uh, American uh, friends would would like this one framed it's quite nice there we go and we also have um, a booklet as well Early photos of the of the group, Berwick Street Market in Soho. Uh, that's right on the, uh, the Liverpool um, ferry or Liverpool docks. That's down in Western Supermare photo. And then we've got the track listings, four photos. And up to that point there. So that's the Red Album box set. Reconstruct it. Actually, when these big boxes come out, storage is a problem. So um, these tend to stay on a shelf and don't get moved out very much. So I had to move a few things to, to retrieve these. So as you would expect, as you would expect. There's the blue album as well. Again, numbered. Oh, this one's lopsided. One four five five eight. Okay. And on the inside, once again, black with the, with a sealed copy of the uh, blue album CD. And again, this cost. 
£26.99 and I'm guessing that these were actually included in because I've got exactly the same advert again similar badge what poster have they got this time one from the last photo session what a great poster to get framed if that's your desire okay. and then we have the booklet Seven there, making their way through a few mad day out pictures. Yeah, great places to visit if you uh, if you get a chance to. And then on to the last photo session there, and then I believe that is probably the one of the last pictures ever of them together. And that's the booklet. So, putting all this back. Then, as a as a bit of a surprise, um, EMI then put out EMI Apple put out um, Past Masters, which basically then meant you could complete every single um, Beatles track ever issued uh, up until this point, obviously um, on CD. So Past Masters Volume One. It's got the black image on the front. Um, number 1699 on the inside. And there's the uh, CD. De deconstruct the box. No price on this one. I'm guessing it was probably less than £27 uh, badge. And all you get is a booklet. No posters, nothing else. So, it's quite a boring box set, I, in, uh, in my opinion. In fact, I, I found Past Masters quite uninspired. Um, but as this isn't a review uh, video, I won't really go into that. I just found the whole thing a bit uninspired, and they could have done a lot better with the packaging. Quite dull. And then finally, we have the last issue, which is Past Masters Volume 2. So lift the lid off, um, again numbered 1097, not a very high number really, it's all good. And then we have Cardboard Inner, the CD, again, no mention of Apple, just um, EMI parlour phone, in layout, and there it is for the last one, the last badge, there we are. and again another uninspiring magazine unfortunately. You think of the wealth of photos that were available that they could have used, there we are. Interesting ones there, but more about the, uh, the tracks. Going on to that, which it seems an odd picture to end on, um, burning the Beatles stuff, but there we are. So, that brings to a conclusion the box sets uh, as HMV issued them. One other thing I should have shown you earlier, um, I was actually invited to the launch of the original box set, the first four, um, and it was at um, the Limelight Club, which was an old church turned into a nightclub, um, and since has closed down, has now been a squat, <laughs> and I, I believe they're just um, they're clearing it out as we speak. Um, but yeah, it was held at the Limelight. Um, for the launch of the very first ever Beatles CD box set, and we'll open up inside. Um, Bootleg Beatles performed live at midnight, and uh, there we are. And there's the invite. 
So, um, that rounds it back up to the first box set, which is the issue for the Beatles CDs. And obviously, subsequently, there's been box sets after box sets after box sets. I hope you enjoyed seeing these ones. Uh, they are a little bit unusual, and I should imagine if you're not in the UK, that could probably be the first time you've seen inside them. Really love to hear comments. Please let me know what you think of the videos. Um, thumbs up if you really like them. Thumbs up anyway, please. And I really want to, want you to subscribe so you get to hear when there's another video out on YouTube. But my name's Andrew Brooks, and I'd like to thank you once again. See you soon.